Hello, my name is Mark Taylor. Welcome to the Education on Fire podcast network. This show is sponsored by the National Association for Primary Education. Hello and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. The place where we share creative and inspiring learning in our schools. Hello, welcome back to the Education on Fire podcast in this one of our Primary Music on Fire specials. Today I'm really excited to be joined by Rachel Hobson and she's creating something called Pizzicato Lane. Um, And we've just been chatting before we started recording about how these things brew over a number of years and a number of times. And it's really exciting for me to hear these sorts of things because I love sharing new creative things that are happening and supporting schools. And and having created Primary Music on Fire, I know how these things sort of morph in our minds before we can actually get them to become a reality. So I'm, I'm excited to hear exactly how that story and how that journey has happened. So Rachel, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Mark. Thank you. So why don't we talk a little bit about your professional background and, and how music is obviously must be part of your life. And, and then we'll start to think about exactly how Pizzicato Lane got going. Okay, okay. Um, well, I've, I've always known I wanted to teach music from a very early age. Um, I was one of those kids, those geeky kids that always spent their spare time in the practice room at lunchtime, um, never left it. Um, and so I've taught music in the secondary school for 20 years. I've been head of department for about eight years now. Um, and I absolutely love it. I love um, the, the thing I, I love the most is seeing the impact that music can have on children's lives. Um, and I think after having my own children, it sort of inspired me to look at early years and how music can sort of um, develop the, 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 the very beginning of a life. Um, so, so in my role, um, every day I'll sort of deliver the GCSE side of things, um, extracurricular activities, that kind of thing. So it's all very, very busy. Um, but music is at the heart of everything that I do. Um, I'm married to a, a drum teacher, so um, it's, it's very much part of our lives. Well, that's really interesting, especially being a drummer myself. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm wholeheartedly behind it in, in, in oh, terms of doing that. Um, so, in, in, in terms of that teaching, and, and I, I love the fact that you know your your sense of sort of embedding it in those early years and starting through. What, why was it that? Why was it an idea of of deciding to start that young as opposed to just into primary? Um, I think really I was inspired by um, uh, the CBBS in a way when my children were, were old enough to watch it. Um, just the, the the way that music sort of played a part in the programs they used to watch. Obviously, you know the visuals were important, the the, the cartoon characters, the colours, etc. But I could see that there was a real understanding of um, how music was used to sort of develop um, language literacy, even at that very early age. And so um, that passion, together with my my other passion, um, music, but being at a higher level um, kind of inspired me to look at the other end of the spectrum and to sort of just just learn um, uh, another side to my, my profession if you like. I think also you know like you say it's a very it's a very personal thing isn't it music it's something which just gets an immediate reaction as well especially when children are younger you know the, the ability to want to dance the ability to want yeah. to, to move with it the, the ability to, to interact in a way like you say which you can't do in the same way necessarily verbally or, yeah. or depending on that level so it really does have I think that sort of innate sort of personality trait that comes through Absolutely, yes. And um, sort of teaching at a secondary level, you, you, by the time that the children are sort of 11 to, to 14 or 16, they've they've lost that kind of um, enjoyment as such. They're very self-conscious at that age, whereas at the, you know, the, the early years sort of uh, spectrum, um, that, that none of those inhibitions are there. They just, it, it's all come, it comes naturally. They just react to music in such a positive way that They'll sing their hearts out and they won't care who's listening or who's watching. And it's I find that really inspiring and I find that really, um, really valuable to, to watch. Yeah, and I always find that when I'm involved in that scenario, it really sort of brings yourself out of yourself a little bit. Or, yeah. or, or, or even sort of enables you to remember just how inhibited you can become sometimes because yes. like, you, you yeah. don't you don't you feel a little bit uncomfortable by doing that. But they, they just bring that joy through, I think. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's something that we lose as we, as we get older, I think. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. So you were saying that the, the idea of creating something like this has been it's been a few years in the making. So take us through that journey from your sort of original idea and how it's gradually got to the point now where, where you're sort of in a position to launch. 
Um, so uh, when I was off on maternity leave with my older children, who are now 17 and 15, I sort of put these ideas together. I, I started with a series of songs. Um, and then over the years, when I've had time after going back to work, school holidays, whatever it was, I just dip in and out, try and add a bit more to it, come up with some stories that match the songs, etc. But now I've had my third child um, and I've got that maternity time again. I've really kind of put myself into it and uh, made a whole package of resources, which hopefully um, will be useful to so many schools and nurseries um so yeah it's it's been a real journey it's it's one that I, I feel like um it's now or never so if I don't do it now I won't have the time to do it again and it's really in my heart to do it so I, I've just followed it and, and gone with it yeah no it sounds fantastic and, and, and it's great isn't it to be able to build up that sort of portfolio of stuff over a number of years as well that yeah sort of gives you that right. chance to to build it up so, so take us through um how it works how, how, it, how it sort of teachers and schools and people that might use it actually can bring it into reality so it's a package of resources written as series. So within um, series one, for example, um, there's five stories. Um, each story introduces a um, instrumental character. So, for example, story one focuses on uh, Vicky Violin and every story follows the same format because children like um, routine. They, they feel comfortable with that. So um, the instrumental um the instrument becomes the focus of the story and um, in every story it encounters some kind of problem um, which in, in involves problem solving by the children and so Mr Music uh, is another character he always turns up to sort of save the day and he summons the beat bunch so you've got Sam Semibrieve you've got uh, Maisie Minim Billy Crotchet and Kelly Quaver and um, there's all these uh, each each character's got its own song um, and they kind of put a challenge to the children um, and the, the challenge is a listening challenge and they have to um, sort of listen to differentiated challenges. Um, this could be done as a group activity or an individual activity. And the way they indicate their answers is I've designed um, really quite big floor mats. I think they're one and a half metres by a metre. Um, they're like twister mats, so they're, they're quite colourful. They're made of a PVC. Um, and so the, the children sort of stand on the right uh, picture or touch the right picture um, to indicate their answers and as I say these are differentiated tasks and so once that's been done and there's been various more songs um, the, the the story concludes and it's all happy and dandy again in Pizzicato Lane <laughs> and, and it goes on like that so every um, every story's got a different instrument character and it follows a, a very similar format because I think children they do feel secure with routine. They do. And I think also what I liked about that is the fact that especially at that sort of younger age, they want to be moving. They don't want to be just sat yeah. down in one place and all that kind of thing. And I think that kind of the movement factor, the fact that they can see what's going on and, and the size of it sounds like it's perfect mm. for that kind of age group. Well, I think that's what makes the resource unique is that you've got you've got that interactive. It's it's not a, obviously a digital interactive thing that maybe further down the line it might be, but you've got that movement, you've got that kind of physical kind of element to it. Um, whereas a lot of a lot of resources are just sort of purely sitting there or not really interacting as such. So it's yeah, I think it makes it makes the resource quite unique. And and how did you come up with the stories? I mean, that's that's a very creative thing to do above and beyond just having that musical knowledge that you wanted to share. <laughs> well, my husband um, is actually very good at drawing, so he's designed all the um, images for uh, each of the characters. Um, and it's just been the case of okay, so um, you know, what do I what do I think Year Sevens would like coming in? What instruments do they kind of know? Which are the really which are the important instruments that stand out in the orchestra? Um, so we, we sort of went with the obvious ones like violin, flute trumpet that kind of thing turn them into characters and then it's just been a gradual thing so for example um when i was on holiday uh, last year we went down to devon cornwall i just I'd, in the car but as we were driving around if i saw a place name like crackington for example um i wrote it down and then i kind of thought okay crackington sounds like it could do, be to do with eggs so one of the stories is sort of based around a character one of the instruments who has a, a, a summer job on a farm collecting eggs at crackington farm so it's just been like um just just sort of um 
on the, on the spur of the moment, really, just, just anything that came to me, anything that I saw on my journeys, I just make a note of it and then just sort of wrapped it up into these stories. But I, I've loved it because it's given me a chance to be creative again, um, which, again, I think we, we lose as we go down um, life. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and what's great is that when, when it's an integral part of your life as well, because like you say, you've sort of done it on uh, on your journey like a holiday, um, but also yeah you, you like say you can have fun with it you can be creative and especially when it's one step removed when I can imagine certainly teaching GCSE you know it's quite structured isn't it and, and the syllabuses and all that kind of thing so to be able to have a project which is completely self-devised must be a sort of really freeing experience it is to be fair yes I've really enjoyed it it's um it's been almost like a therapy in a way it, it's it's I think very often in, in schools um when music's your passion, but it's something that is your job, you can lose that enjoyment of it. So it's allowed me to sort of regain that enjoyment of the subject, but from a, a slightly different angle. So I've, I've really loved it, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think I think actually having it as a different age group focused than, than your day-to-day as well, it just, it just must freshen that up. Yes, absolutely, yeah, it really does. So from a teacher or school point of view, um, what's their experience? Is it a question of going online and signing up to something you said you've got these mats and things that the children are going to move in for so is it a much more sort of physical product how, how does it work on a, on a practical basis so the website's been launched in the next few weeks um, and so um, teachers will be able to go online and download the, re- the resources so they'll get the stories they'll get the songs they get the images um, backing tracks they get guidance for delivery notes um, assessment trackers um, all the challenges and extension tasks, those are all um, downloadable uh, files. And then they choose which package they want. So um, I know that money in schools is quite tight. So, for example, they might opt for the economy package. Um, you don't need to purchase mats for that. It's got the a kind of an alternative to using the mats, whereby there might be pictures around the room that the kids move to certain areas to kind of indicate their answers. But then if they want to purchase the mats, they can do that through myself and I'll be sending those out. So I, I, I like the fact that, you know, you can make it flexible. And I think you're right. I think every school is in a different situation, aren't they? And they also like to try these things out and build into yeah. these things. And, and I think sort of building that trust and understanding and being able to fit these things in is uh, it's a great starting point. Yeah, I think so. And of course, once they purchase the mats, when Series 2 comes out, they'll be able to use the mats in conjunction with Series 2. So it's not just a, an empty investment they can sort of reuse which is good. I think also, I think having that focus on early years, I think is um, I think is a really smart idea because th- there are structured things slightly for older children. And, and I know there are things designed for early years, but I think really having an understand of, of the play idea and understanding that it's an integral part of who they are and, and being able to combine all those things together in, in a package which is very sounds very user-friendly is actually going to be something which people really enjoy. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I've designed it and created it in mind of the the non-specialist music teacher, because obviously a lot of schools don't have the specialist um, sort of teacher there to to sort of deliver these sessions, Um, especially nurseries. um, You'd be very um, hard pushed to find a nurse with a music specialist. So that's all been sort of created with that in mind. Um, But also um, the new Ofsted framework, it's been, um, I think that's quite a unique selling point that um, the, the resource does offer a supportive um it's supportive of a progressive model in line with the uh, the new Ofsted framework so um it, it will sort of give guidance as to h- how a document could be produced by the school to show progression uh with their music from uh, early years right the way through to year six um so there'll be some kind of focus there and some kind of guidance which hopefully um will be a unique unique selling point to head teachers yeah, and I think it certainly is something at the moment, and we're hearing a lot of people, one, concerned about how they can explain to Ofsted exactly what it is that they're doing, and um, and, and I think having a, something in place to be able to do that is really, really, really useful. And, um, and, and just explain also in terms of what you said about sort of um, nurseries and, and early years I mean what sort of age range are you are you looking for and, and how can you sort of help that sort of progress into maybe slightly further into the key stages 
Um, well, it's quite interesting because I, I have sent out via a forum um, people who are interested, teachers who are interested in sampling part of the um, the resources, and the feedback I've had um, has been great. And some um, some teachers have decided to do it with sort of um, preschool children, so sort of age three, four, um, and then other teachers have decided to deliver it up to sort of using uh, year two. And all, all of them have said how how well it works in terms of it being engaging, and it's great as um you know it, it's great for all abilities so they found it very enjoyable for, for that age range so i think it is it's quite flexible it's a quite flexible thing yeah I, th- I think the ability thing is really is really important and and it's certainly something i know some people struggle with especially in that key stage one and and, and we said, as we said earlier years but it's it's that kind of remembering that it has to be fun remembering that it's it's mm. actually experimenting and, and just sort of yeah. learning learning as, as you go but it's the skills that you get during that point that you can actually then start to feel um, embedded as you then start to get further into the school because you've done all of that work in a very structured and, and organic way even though the actual delivery can be, be very playful and, yeah. and and that really I think enables you to see where you want music to progress through the school as well. That's right. I, I think it's a, v- a very underestimated thing. I mean, um, it, there's been studies to show that schools that place an importance on music education, they do have higher attainment and they have a higher rate of progress. So I think it's it's recognising the value of something like this um, and being able to implement it, you know, for the benefit of the whole school, really. It's def- that's, I think that's definitely true. And, and, and certainly for me, uh, I think the Ofsted framework, is, as you mentioned, is going to be very integral to that because schools are very reactive to what they have to do as well as what they want to do. And I think this does give mm. them the freedom to be able to put the time and effort and, and money to some extent in, into focusing on that. And we all know that children, you know, what not just children you know as people we have things that we like we have things that we enjoy and actually being able to express ourselves in whichever form that comes that there are certain outlets that work for us and I think having music as an integral part like we said earlier on in terms of you know the lack of inhibition and the fact that you can dance and move and sing and all of that without Mm. those inhibitions to be able to support children to be able to express themselves through that is, is is a really important factor. Yeah, I really believe that. Um, I mean, I work in Sandwell um, and it's it's known to be one of the deprived areas of, of the country. Um, but the difference that music can make, especially when the home life isn't so good, um, the difference it can have on a child's self-esteem, confidence, etc. You can't put a price on that. I mean, that's really, really important. So you, you were mentioning that the, the website's going to be launching very soon. Is it a question of going onto the website and, like you said, you can download stuff? Or are you, are you able to sort of show people around exactly what's on offer as well? Um, absolutely. There'll be um, a free sample on there. Um, so you can they'll be able to access um, the first story. Um, they can look at the, the two songs that come with that. Um, there'll be some guidance for delivery notes. So there'll be a window into what you actually get before you actually make the purchase. And then you can decide what package suits you and your school. But yes, it's um, it's, it's a very sort of uh, transparent thing. Um, and hopefully that will sort of, you know, make people interested and want to take a second look. Yeah, no, it sounds, sounds perfect. I think that you know people being able to have that that window in I think is a really important one and just take us through those packages in terms of of the cost of schools exactly what's the range of, of what it is that you offer so the the the, the first package is uh, you get your five stories um, the five songs that go with that you get all the images to be projected as you read the stories you get your, your backing tracks guidance for delivery notes um, assessment tracker differentiated music challenges and extension tasks and you'll also have that guide to the Ofsted framework as well um, so that will be 49.99 and then if you decide to go with that one and you'll need the mats, obviously, it's thirty nine ninety nine for one mat, um, ninety nine ninety nine for three and one hundred and thirty nine ninety nine for five mats. But I would like to make it clear that you can actually get um, three to four children on one mat. So they don't need one each. Um, it can be a group activity or it can be tailored to your, your class or your, your, your small group that you've got. It could be an individual thing, but it's, it's a group thing as well. And then if you don't want to purchase the mats, because obviously the overall cost will be more expensive, you can go for the economy package where you get all your stories and songs that are mentioned but you also get the alternative to the mats and that'll be 69.99 fantastic i mean and that's 
you know it's very user friendly you know it's within scope of, of of schools and budgets i think and like i say and, and obviously money is is important but i think when you you'll look at it in terms of investing in and the teachers and the support that they can have and of course investing in the children and the experience that they have and how you can fit that through i mean that's very much what primary music on fire is all about is the fact that it's been able to use resources that you can fit into your understanding of what you'd like music in your school to be and i and that's why i love having these conversations just because to be able to share all these different options that people can have to actually feel confident that not only do they have the resources they that they want to have to deliver it and like you say especially if they're non-specialists and they need that extra support but mm. also in in the fact that they from there can see how it can develop and I, I, it sounds sounds great and, and I'm, I'm i'm really excited to see how it, how it develops for you so if, if oh thank in, you <laughs> in, in in terms of time and, and framework when, when do you think it will actually be live and we'll have all the details on the show notes for this episode but we'll also be able to update it as we go forward but just just in terms of time scale at the moment when will people be able to get hold of it uh, well we're hoping the website will be up and running within six weeks so within that time period you know, at the end of six weeks it should be available for purchase um, but if people want to uh, contact me directly in the meantime um, via email um, I'm willing to sort of send roll it out over email that's another option fantastic so what is the are you happy for people to to say the email now so that we can send it out or and um, would you like me just put it on the show notes so people can get it from there uh, you can do both. That would be great. My um, business address is rachel at pizzicatolane.com. Fantastic. And, and like I said, we'll, we'll have those links through on, on the show notes as well and also the website. So um, six weeks from now. So we're probably talking into the beginning of the new year, I would suggest. Yes, that would be great. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Well, Thank you so much for chatting to us, Rachel. It's, it's it's really interesting. And I have to say that that very sort of early years is something I do have experience with, but from a more sort of rhythm-based um, approach, which is obviously my background yeah. as well. So, and, and, and I find it really interesting and... And, and and I think rewarding, you know, hearing people being able to really tap into what's important for, for those younger children. And I can really see from what you the picture that you've painted, the, the, the sorts of um, experience that they have, which I think they'll absolutely love. So um, I wish you all the best with it. And um, yeah, th- thanks so much for chatting to us. OK, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Education on Fire podcast. For more information of each episode and to get in touch, go to educationonfire.com. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire.